Okay, I was asked by a client to do a, a sort of a transition from a, a circle and moving to a small to a bigger circle and I have probably transition over about four or five circles showing the circles getting bigger but also a gradient of color from green to red showing you know no pain to a lot of pain I had to do that and that would be used as, as a, a sort of a, a part of the design that was happening and once again, I love working with Affinity and this is how I actually accomplished it with Affinity. I started off with creating just the, the first circle. Now this thing has got some uh, settings on it that I had prior to me doing this. Yeah, I wanted to show you totally from scratch. So we're going to go there and I've got a mic in one hand. So um, I'm going to probably go quiet on certain parts when I need to press a key or two with my left hand. Um, I don't have a mic stand, so apologies for that. So we have the first squee, and then what I add to that squee, whoops, did I say a squee? I'm confused. I'm adding an outer shadow, and I'll just drag it all to the middle so we can see what the settings are. And that's pretty much where I want to have it. I'm going to have that kind of setting, and then um, I wanted a, a white sort of circle around here. And if I had to put a white circle without any sort of outer shadow, um, it wouldn't be clearly defined. So that outer shadow is basically to make this circular area relevant over here. Okay, so I pulled it in there. And that's the color of the outer circle or the edge of this particular object. And basically, I'm going to take this and duplicate it across five examples and they're going to go increasing in size Sorry if you hear some knocking on the mic as I move there. So I'm going to select that and then use the align tools to create equal spaces in between. And that pretty much would sort that out. Okay, so I, I'm happy with the fact that we have the outer shadow, um, or commonly called the drop shadow, and we have the colors inside. But I want this to move from a green to a red there. And how do we do it in Affinity? Um, I'm going to grab all of them and then go to the fill tool, which is a gradient tool. Click there and I'll start at the one side. Uh, it gives me a nice smart guide, which is in the middle. Hold the mouse down and then drag it right across to the other side. And I can go past if I want to or drop it just at that edge. So yeah, I have now the gradient that's in here. I want this end to be red, so I double click on this. And this one will give me my total red color. So I can actually even just click in there and go make this 255 and 0 and 0. And then I know I've got a kind of a close to perfect red that I'm looking at. Then this side I want to have green. I can double click that and I'm going to just guesstimate this green. Okay, we can pull that down. And there we've got a beautiful gradient. However, you might find because it's going across this is almost green and this is still green and you want it to be quite a bit of a transition still okay so if i come on this side i'm going to just make this a little bit darker so we can have that section so this is basically a natural gradient but how do we have control to create the gradient going a bit more you know from the red it's going to go into kind of a, a red orange and then an orange green and then a little bit of dark green to a lighter green and then ultimately to the bright green by that we can just hover over the areas and drop in particular nodes over there in this case here uh, i would actually go and drop in a click on here drop a node and then you see it's almost choosing an orange already because it's determining it but then i can tweak that orange to be a little brighter and you can see what's happening along that gradient here also i could take it to be a bit more aggressive but the point I'm mentioning about Affinity Designer that is so beautiful is that this gradient tool 
is so smooth to work with. So now I have the orange that's pretty much here. Um, and then it's starting to get a bit green. And I want that green or a little bit of this orange still to filter further down. So I create another node and I kind of drag it in there, even right up until that point. And then I want some of this green, which is not a clean green still to... So I click in there and I start dragging it across there. So if I take this away now, there you can get the nice kind of green going across that way. And, and then tweak it accordingly where you want to. But yeah, the beautiful thing is again also that if I want to get back to that gradient, I select the group that I'm working on. I click the gradient and that bar immediately appears. Um, if I want to work on an individual one, if I want to come in here and click the bar, it will also initiate across those there because that is a kind of linked gradient that I'm working with. So that's how we get a beautiful gradient, but this looks extremely flat. So one other thing that I, I did with this project was I went to the Crescent tool, which is, these are parametric objects. Okay, I think I've explained in the other videos. If I click in here, I'm going to make the outline be zero pixels there because I don't want an outside line. Um, and I'm going to just go to the coloring and make that transparent. And the actual color, I will basically just choose a dark green so I can see what's happening. So if I draw this, it's a parametric. So these objects here, I can adjust where the red nodes are. And that goes basically for all of these objects over here. I've dealt with them in another video. So very exciting about that. Um, so I've got that, but I want to use this as a reflective area. So I can grab that. I'll bring it on here. And my light is going to be coming from about, you know, what's this time here? 11 o'clock side. So if I sort of angle it coming from the top area, and pretty much you, you get kind of close to the edge. Um, and of course, it's not green. It is going to be white. So I just put it green so I could see it a bit better whereas if I had it as white on this white background I might not be able to see it. So I'm going to now choose the white and if we zoom out you, you could kind of get a slightly believable but that's not really what we want. So I'm going to kind of shape it in that area and once I'm happy with where it's going to I go to this other tool which is also a gradient but it's a transparency gradient tool. When I click that I can go in there and drag over that area and that's how beautiful it is. So it's creating a transparent masked gradient for me. And when I click off that, that's what I'm getting there. Okay, and then I can use the little arrow keys to nudge it. Kind of you've got to get it close to the edge so that that definition gets nicely clear there. Okay, so there we have that there. And then I'm going to just replicate that across. I'm going to alt and drag that and basically resize it. Just one second. Here again, if I need to make any alterations while I'm selected on that area, I can click the Crescent tool and it will give me a handle. So it's a nice little neat thing instead of working with, you know, the vector art as such and, and working with curves. I can select it and if I click Convert to Curves, it will convert it to the conventional curves you work with. But it's nice to work with these parametric objects. And there we go. I'm going to just use the arrow keys to nudge it a bit. But pretty much, yes, with a bit of modification and everything there, we've got a, a nice sense of of roundness, of depth, of perception. You know, in photography, you've got to have light and dark. There's always this contrast and reflection, a bit of diffuse, a bit of uh, highlights in the thing. And that gives a bit of the realism to it. So... Yeah, that's that's how I got those items sorted out and then they could work from, you know, from a no pain on the left through to a painful experience. 
and, and that would express it. So you could use this for creating buttons for, you know, websites, etc. So uh, it can be used for multiple purposes. So the two keys here is basically the ability to to have a gradient going across them and then to use this little uh, offset here. If you find the area maybe is a bit too too bold for you, um, from a distance it look fine, but if you're doing a visual like this that feels a bit too bold, you can modify it. Or you could go and add an effect where you click on the effect and you add possibly a little bit of Gaussian blur just to soften it. It's not always too advisable, but from a distance like this, it, it kind of looks fine. Um, often based on the type of material. So if this is an absorbent material that, that is reflecting, it will have a kind of dull edge to it. And then if it still feels too bold, you could take it and then take the opacity possibly down of the object and you can create whatever realism. So the Gaussian, the opacity of the area could also play a role. But the one on the right here, the red one, is actually looking quite beautiful. So how the actual light reflects and how it curves at the bottom, if you give attention to that detail, you'll create lots more realism. So you might find one like this one doesn't look that much. So I'm going to just take the Gaussian off. Um, and even the shape might not be as smart as this one. This one's indicating a more of a bulge. So if we go here, we could go back to our tool and maybe make this a little bit, little bit thicker and see if it gives us more of a bulge. Yeah, that kind of, that's showing us that it reflects and there's more of a curve, etc. So you play around with that and it will give you, you'll take your flat objects and start to create a lot of depth with them. It's something that I discover when I do a lot of the 3D work that I do um, uh, in Cinema 4D or SketchUp or Unreal Engine. Lighting and, and material textures often what makes things feel more soft or feel more organic in the process. So I hope this has been of value to you um, and share it with others. You know, the more we share, the more we grow. Uh, so I hope you have a fantastic day and God bless.
So I hope that's been of value to you. And uh, yeah, share the news with others. If you, if there's others that don't know how to do it, keep sharing, and that way we all grow. So have a fantastic day, and God bless.